Uh, dear brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus, we are going to present to you a very timely message, especially about the antitypical Day of Atonement. I invite you to open your Bibles in Proverbs 28, 13, and 14, which says, He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whose confession forsakes them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that fears away, always, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. And the first John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I would like to call your attention, for, especially for 1 John 1.9, which says, When we confess our sins, Christ forgives our sins and he purifies us, he cleanses us from all our unrighteousness. Now we have a special quotation here from the Spirit of Prophecy, which says, If you are right with God today, you are ready if Christ should come today. Heavenly Places 227. Now, in Israel, let us uh, go through the uh, the sanctuary in Israel. The sanctuary had three parts. One was outside. Another part was the most the holy place, and the third part was the most holy place. Now let us read uh, Leviticus chapter 12, 1, verse two to five. When a, a man commits a sin, he should come to the the, the door of the tabernacle, and he would bring an animal, a lamb, and he would confess his sins upon the head of the animal. Thus, he was transferring in figure his sins upon the, the head of the animal. Now, that the man it's himself, he, he would kill the animal. And now the priest would take the blood and to take the altar who was close to the door of the tabernacle. Then the Bible says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, he shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. If the, his offering be a burnt sacrifice to the herd, let him offer a male without blemish, because that animal was a symbol of Christ, who had no sin, no blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Then in figure, when the sinner confessed his sin upon the head of the animal, he was transferring his sin to the animal, and from the animal that sin was transferred to the sanctuary. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest. Aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that it by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Then, brethren, in Israel there was uh, two special ceremonies, two special services. One was made in behalf of the individual. The other one was made in behalf of the congregation. But the, inspira the inspiration says, the most important part of the daily ministration was the service performed in behalf of individuals. The repentant sinner brought his offering to the door of the tabernacle and placed his hands upon the victim head, confessed his sins, thus in figure, transferring them from himself to the, to the innocent sacrifice. By his own hand, the animal was then slain. And the blood was carried by the priest into the holy place and sprinkled before the veil, behind which was the ark containing the law that the sinner had transgressed. By this ceremony, the sin was, through the blood, transferred in figure to the sanctuary. In some cases, the blood was not taken to the holy place, but the flesh 
was then to be eaten by the priest, as Moses directed the son of Aaron to say, God has given you to bear the iniquity of the congregation. Observe, brethren, that uh, then in two special ways. First, the individual, he brought the animal to the door of the congregation, and he would put his hand upon the, the head of the animal, confess his sins, and in figure, he was transferring his sins to the animal, innocent animal. Now he killed the animal, and the blood of the animal was taken to the sanctuary. Then the sins was transferred from the sinner to the animal and to the sanctuary. That was made uh, every day, every day. Now, there was another part, or another ceremony, that was uh, done in behalf of the congregation. Every morning and evening, a lamb of an ear was old, was burned upon the altar with this appropriate meat offering. That symbolized the daily consecration of the nation to Jehovah, and their constant depends upon the atoning blood of Christ. Then, brethren, another ceremony was at nine in the morning. There was a morning sacrifice when that animal was slain in behalf of the whole congregation. And at the three afternoon, another sacrifice was made evening. Then uh, these two worship, these two ceremonies, they were performed every day in behalf of the nation. Now, at the end of the year, there you, more or less September, October, there was the Day of Atonement. What was the purpose? You remember that uh, every day, because the sinners confessed their sins, the sins of the people were transferred to the sanctuary. Now, in the Day of Atonement, those sins should be removed from the sanctuary. That was cleansing of the sanctuary. A pioneer, SDA pioneer Andrizin, in his book, Sanctuary Service, he says, the day of atonement was the great day in Israel. It was peculiarly holy, and on it, no work was to be done. The Jews called it Yoma, the day. It was the keystone of the sacrificial system. Whoever did not on that day afflict his soul was cut off from Israel. Leviticus 23, 29. The Day of Atonement occurred on the 10th of the seven months, Tishri, which corresponds to our September, October. The special preparation for this, this day began on the first day of Tishri. Now, what was the purpose of the Day of Atonement? We already mentioned that all those sins that were transferred by confession and repentance to the sanctuary should be removed the day of atonement. Because when we confess our sins to Jesus Christ, our sins are transferred to him. And before our names, it's written, forgiven or justified. But the sins are still there. In the, the final part of the day of atonement, those sins should be removed from the sanctuary. Then, but the Day of Atonement in Israel, the high priest should make a, make a sacrifice in behalf of himself, because he was a sinner. Before, besides being a sinner, the sins of the people were transferred to the sanctuary and through the priests. Now those sins should be removed from the life of the priest, from the place they were removed from the sanctuary. Chapter 16, from verse 3. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Verse 5 says, He shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for Israel, and make an atonement for himself for his house. Then, brethren, in the Day of Atonement, the sins that were put on Aaron, the sins that were in, of his family, the sins that were transferred to sanctuary should be removed through sacrifice. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. 
Verse 8 says, And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Then uh, Aaron, he'll take two, get two goats, and uh, one was the symbol of Christ, the other was the symbol of Satan. Then that animal should be slain. Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement with him and let him go for a scapegoat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Now, then we have Aaron, the high priest, should offer a bullock to make atonement for himself and his family. He would take two goats, one as an offer for the Lord and the other as a scapegoat. The first goat should be sacrificed and the scapegoat to let him go to the wilderness. Now verse 14, the same chapter says, He shall take off the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat sword. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then, brethren, in the most holy place, we had the ark. Inside the ark was God's law, which demands the life of the sinner. Now, above the ark, there was a special place called the mercy seat. Then Aaron, as high priest, he arrived there with the blood of the, the first goat, which symbolized the Lord, and he sprinkled the blood upon the mercy seat as saying, look, you law, you condemn sinner to death. Then I, I found a substitute, and I bring the blood to satisfy the law. Then the sins of the whole, the whole congregation was forgiven, and now another ceremony. But what was the mercy city? Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that's for the people, and bring the blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat. The mercy seat was a cover of pure gold, which was above the ark. Inside the ark was the law of God, which demanded the life of the sinner. The wage of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. And all the transgress of the holy law must die eternal death. When the high priest brought the blood and sprinkled it on the mercy seat. He was practically saying, you demand the life of the sinner. Here is the blood of the victim, a substitute of the life of the sinner. Now then he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of congregation that remain among them in the midst of the uncleanness. Now, another point very important. After he sprinkled the blood upon the mercy seat, there was another work to be done. Now, he would take in figure the sins from the sanctuary and put upon the, the goat that would be taken to the wilderness. Let us read what says the inspiration. Important truth concerning the atonement are taught by the typical service. A substitute was accepting the sinner's stead, but the sin was not canceled by the blood of the victim. A means was thus provided by which he was transferred to the sanctuary. By the offering of blood, the sinner acknowledged the authority of the law confess his guilt in transgression and express his desire for pardon through faith in the Redeemer to come. In reality, the sins were forgiven because the, the believer, the sinner, recognized Christ as his Savior. But he was not yet entirely released from the condemnation of the law. On the day of atonement, the high priest, having taken an offering from the congregation, went into the most holy place with the blood of this offering, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat directly over the law. 
to make satisfaction for its claims. Then, in his character of mediator, he took the sins upon himself and bore them from the sanctuary. Placing his hand upon the head of the scapegoat, he confessed over him all these sins, thus in figure transferring them from himself to the goat. The goat then bore them away, and they were regarded as forever separate from the people. Such was the service performance, this example, and example, shadow of heavenly things. And what was done in type in the ministration of the earthly sanctuary is done in reality in the ministration of the heavenly sanctuary. After his ascension, our Savior began his work as our high priest, says Paul. Christ is not entering into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Then let's review something. On the cross of Calvary, Christ offered himself as our substitute and our savior. He died in our stead. After his resurrection, he went up to the, most, to the holy place, the sanctuary, heavenly sanctuary, and la he start intercession on our behalf. The ministration of the priest through the year in the first apartment of the sanctuary within the veil, which formed the door and separated the holy place from the outer court, represents the work of ministration upon which Christ entered his ascension. It was the work of the priest in the daily ministration to present before God the blood of the sin offering, also the incense which ascended with the praise of Israel. So did Christ plead his blood before the Father on behalf of sinners and presented before him also with the precious fragrance of his own righteousness, the praise of penitent believers. Such was the work of ministration of the first apartment of the sanctuary in heaven. Brethren, Christ started his work of intercession after his ascension, and he stayed there for 1,800 years, interceding for us. But that time he was interceding and forgiving, but the sins remained there. For 18 centuries, this work of ministration continued in the first apartment of the sanctuary. The blood of Christ pleaded in behalf of the penitent believers, secured their pardon and acceptance with the Father, yet their sins still remained upon the book of record. As in the typical service, there was a work of atonement at the close of the year, so before Christ's work of the redemption of man is completed, there is a work of atonement for the removal of sin from the sanctuary. This is the service which began when the 2,300 days ended. At that time, as foretold by Daniel, the prophet, our high priest entered the most holy to perform the last division of his solemn work to cleanse the sanctuary. Now, brethren, we have a special message for today. Look, it was sin also that while the sin offering point to Christ's sacrifice and the high priest represent Christ as mediator, the scapegoat represents Satan, the author of sin, upon which the sins of the truly penitent will be finally be placed. When the high priest, by virtue of the blood of the sin offering, removed the sins from the sanctuary, he placed them upon the scapegoat. When Christ, by virtue of his own blood, removed the sins of his people from the heavenly sanctuary at the close of his ministration, he will place them upon Satan, who in the execution of the judgment must bear the final penalty. The scapegoat was sent away to the land of not inhabited, never to come again into the congregation of Israel. So will Satan be forever banished from the presence of God and his people, and he will be blotted from existence in the final destruction of sin and sinners. Now, brethren, I'd like to call your attention for Acts chapter 3, verse 19, which says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when these times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Brethren, that's a very special message. The Apostle Peter says, 
repent. What the meaning of repent? Repentance. Repentance is sorrow for sin and turn away from it. Separation from sin. Now, then, we have here repentance, conversion, and he says, he doesn't say that their sin may be forgiven. It's true that the sins are forgiven, but more than that, the sins are blotted out when the time of refresh shall come from the presence of the Lord. Then, then we have repentance, conversion, blotting out of sins, let the rain, the, the work is finished, the number of saved are completed, then we have the the time of probation is finished, we start to have time of trouble, and after the time of trouble, Christ will come to, take, to bless his people in his second coming. Now, I'd like to, to call your attention for Zechariah chapter 3, 1 through 5. Zechariah says, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out from the, of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Now, brother, let us have a picture. Then Joshua was the high priest of Israel after they returned from Babylon. Now Zechariah had a vision that the Joshua, the representative of people, the high priest, he was seen in the holy, most holy place before Christ, and Christ gives an order, remove these filthy garments and cover him with special garments. When Satan accuses us, we cannot say that this is a lie, that we didn't, we didn't commit sin. But what did uh, Joshua present before Christ? He presented his people repented and the sorrow for their sins and the willing to, to be forgiven and purified. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. The angel is Christ. And the angel spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Then Christ says, Take away the filthy garment from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will close thee with change of raiment. Brethren, a special attention now. Look, at the end of the day of atonement, Christ will, will purify his people completely. Besides forgiving them, he will remove their sins from the sanctuary. As the people of God afflict their souls, before him, pleading for purity of heart, the command is given, take away the filthy garments from them, and encouraging words are spoken. Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will close thee with change of raiment. Brother, that's a, a wonderful message. The spotless robe of Christ's righteousness is placed upon the tried, tempted, yet faithful children of God. The despised remnant are clothed in glorious apparel, never more to be defiled by the corruption of the world. Brethren, today, when we commit a sin and confess their sins, God, God forgive us, but we are still in danger to commit sins again. But when our sins are removed from the sanctuary by Christ, our sins are removed from our mind also. We are free from sin for eternity. Their names are retained in the Lamb's book of life, enrolled among the face of all ages. They have resisted the vials of the deceiver. They have not been turned from their loyalty by the dragon's roar. Now, observe this point, brethren. Now they are eternally secure from the temple's device. Their sins are transferred to the originate of sin. And the remnant are not only pardoned and accepted, but honored. A fair mitre is set upon their heads. 
they are to be kings and priests unto God. While Satan was urging his accusation and seeking to destroy this company, holy angels unseen were passing to and fro, placing upon the seal of the living God. These are they that stand upon Mount Zion, with the Lamb having the Father's name written in their foreheads. They sing the song before the throne. That song which no man can learn save the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. These are redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. In their mouths was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Brethren, just reviewing these last points. In the final part of the Day of Atonement, Christ not only forgive, but he blot out the sins of his people. Now they are sealed, they receive the latter rain, and then completed the number of the saved people. Then the probationary time is end. Then we start the time of trouble. At the end of the time of trouble, Christ will come to bless his people. Now, brethren, today is the day to go to Jesus, to accept him as a savior. And what is the promise? First uh, John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Now, when Christ is still interceding for us, it's time to, to keep our attention on him, to, to, to keep our connection with him, to maintain a vital relationship with Christ. And he will forgive us, he will cleanse us. And when the time of trouble, when God's people are suffering anguish, they try to find anything in their life. They, their life. they cannot find because the sins are removed from the sanctuary by Christ and they are removed also from our mind. Then we will be forever free from sin. Then Christ will put our sins upon the head of Satan who will suffer the final consequence of his sin. May the Lord help us so that we can keep our connection with Christ. Can we renew our surrender to him completely and he will give us power to overcome our sins and to represent his character. May the Lord bless each one of us here so that we can make firm our election in Christ Jesus. And when Christ comes very soon, we can say he is our savior. With him we will be forever and ever. May the Lord bless us so each one of us can have this wonderful experience today. That's my wish and prayer. Amen. Thank you.